So uh, the first question was uh, question four from 2015. So let me just get that open. Okay, okay. So uh, here's what we have for this problem. We have some infinitely long current of uh, current I naught that's going to be going to the left. Um, then you have some rectangular loop with resistivity of rho. And it has some cross-sectional area of A. So that's the, the cross-sectional area of the, the loop itself, um, or the, the wires that, that form the loop. Uh, dimensions H and W, so this is H, this is W, and uh, this is originally a distance P away from the wire. And so what we want to do is we want to um, find the uh, current that flows through, through the loop if uh, this is going to be moving away with some constant, constant velocity v. Okay, so the first thing that we can do, um, we know that we're going to need to find what the current is that flows around this loop, and so in order to do that we're going to be using Faraday's law, so the integral of E dot dl is equal to um, minus partial derivative with respect to time of the integral of v dot dA. And so looking at this, we realize that in order to find the current that's going to flow around this, we're going to need the magnetic field. So the first thing we really need to do is to find what the magnetic field is that's produced by this really long wire that's at the top here. And so that's to say that uh, the integral of b dot dl is going to be equal to mu naught times i in. Uh, this is just Ampere's law, and so we're going to apply Ampere's law to find what the current is that, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, to find what the magnetic field is that uh, flows uh, through the loop, okay? So in order to do that, what we're going to say is that uh, we have some Amperian loops that we can draw like this. Uh, these have some radius of r, and so b, uh, the integral of b dot dl is going to end up being b times 2 pi r, which is going to be equal to mu naught times i n. And so we can solve for this uh, magnetic field, and that's to say that uh, b is going to be equal to mu naught times i naught divided by 2 pi r. Okay. Now, this is a vector, and so we need to figure out what the direction is that this magnetic field points. And in order to do that, um, first right-hand rule that we're going to use for this problem is to uh, show that the magnetic field is going to point uh, out down here, because we can take our thumb of our right hand, point it in the direction of the current, and then our fingers are going to wrap around in the direction of the magnetic field. And so when we do that, below here, you can see my fingers are pointing out. And so that says that uh, in the region where the loop is, the magnetic field is going to be pointing out. Okay. So that's, that's the first thing that we need to do. Now that we have this magnetic field, what we want to do is we want to um, evaluate uh, Faraday's law. And so in order to do that, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say that because B is out here, I'm going to choose DA also to point out. And if dA points out, this is the next right-hand rule that we're going to have. So if dA points out, thumb in the direction of dA, curl in this direction, and that tells me that my dL is going to go around like this. And I'm also going to say that's the direction of my current. So now that I've labeled these things, we can take the um, circle with an x. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, this should, this should point out. Circle with X is in. Sorry about that. Uh, and i already frozen. Great. Uh, okay. Okay, and we're back. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. So, yeah, this is, this is pointing uh, out. This is pointing out. So uh, magnetic field points out below here. Uh, that says that if it's pointing in this direction, I curl around, the, around this direction. So everything I did was correct. It's just that I, I mixed up the symbol. So this should be pointing 
uh, out. Okay, so now that we have that, what we can do is we can evaluate uh, the right-hand side of Faraday's law. So the integral or uh, negative partial derivative with respect to time of the integral of b dot dA is just going to be equal to uh, the integral of b times dA, negative partial derivative on the outside, because my dA and my b are in the same direction. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to say that, well, dA here is uh, these little elements of uh, this square that I have here. And so I can say that this is some dx and this is going to be some dr. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is a dr is because when I look at the magnetic field here, the magnetic field varies as a function of r, right? And so the, the further away from the wire I get, uh, the smaller the, the magnetic field. And so because b is varying as this distance, the way that I have to set up the integral is such that um, the infinitesimal uh, dr has to come in here. Uh, you could do this a little bit differently. You could say this is dx dy, and then this would be b as a function of y. I just personally prefer to do it uh, as a function of r. Okay, so now what we can do is we can plug this in here, and so this is going to be minus partial derivative with respect to time of the integral of uh, b, uh, which is going to be um, mu naught i naught divided by 2 pi r times dx times dr. And because I have two infinitesimals, this is going to be a double integral. So the limits of integration for x are going to go from 0 to x is equal to w, because x starts here and goes out to here. Limits of integration for r are going to go from p to p plus h. Okay. Now, we want to be careful here, because what's really going to happen is uh, this p is going to be some function of time. So this distance is going to be different for every time step I take because this is moving with some constant velocity v moving down. And so what I'm going to say is that p as a function of time is really just going to be p times, uh, or sorry, p plus v times t. Okay. So now that I have that, I, I can go ahead and evaluate this integral. The integral with respect to x is pretty straightforward. Nothing here is dependent on x. So this is going to give me a minus partial derivative with respect to time of um, mu naught i naught times w uh, divided by 2 pi times, now I have a, a dr or over r uh, uh, integrated from p to uh, p plus h. And so that's going to give me a natural log of p plus h, so p of t plus h divided by p of t. And what's actually a little bit more convenient is to not combine this, so I'm going to, going to leave it uncombined. So this is going to be p of t plus h minus ln p of t, uh, and then brackets, okay. So now what I need to do is I need to take a, a time derivative of this. And so when I do that, the, the natural log has this property for uh, its derivative such that um, the, the derivative, let's say the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of f of x is going to be equal to f prime of x divided by f of x. And so when I take this derivative here, um, dp dt is just going to be equal to v. And so what this is going to give me is this is going to be, um, this is equal to minus um, mu naught uh, i naught uh, w divided by 2 pi times uh, v divided by, uh, I'll plug in what, what p is here, so this is going to be p plus vt plus h minus v divided by p plus v t, okay? And then, and then that's what uh, the right-hand side is. Now, to find what, what the current is, all I need to do is say that uh, this is going to be uh, equal to the current times the resistance. I have to actually find the resistance here because we're told the resistivity and not the resistance. And so the resistance is going to be rho times the total length of this wire which is going to be 2 times uh, h plus w divided by uh, the cross-sectional area, which is a. 
And so what we see the final answer is going to be uh, is i as a function of time is going to be equal to minus mu naught i naught w divided by 2 pi. Uh, we have an a in the numerator, a rho times 2 h plus w in the denominator. And then uh, I'm starting to run out of room here. Um, but this is going to be uh, times uh, v divided by p plus vt plus h minus v divided by p plus vt. Okay, and then this is our this is our final answer. Okay, now we can we can apply uh, Lenz's law to check to see if um, this makes sense. Um, and so uh, what this says is, uh, well, it's a little bit tricky here because this is, uh, this is uh, V times T. Uh, this is going to be a larger denominator than this. So you actually have an additional negative sign here. So, so really what I could do is I could bring this negative sign in over here. And then this is uh, a positive quantity because uh, this is a smaller quantity than this is. And so uh, the current actually does go around in this direction. And so is that consistent with our expectations? Well, if I'm moving this loop away from uh, the long wire up here and the magnetic field varies with x, the further away I get, the less magnetic field that I have going through it, which is going to be a decrease in the magnetic flux. And so the current's going to go uh, in a direction so that it opposes that change, which is going to give you a direction of the induced magnetic field that's the same as the original magnetic field. And so this is um, consistent with, uh, with Lenz's law. OK. I'll, I'll let you guys take a, take a look at this uh, for a little bit and see if you have any questions before I move on to the next one. And then what was, what was the second question? Can you explain after using Ampere's law? And we have our magnetic field in the theta hat direction. How do you convert it to the magnetic field being in or out? Yeah, I, I think I think I, I explained that, uh, Rachel. It's because uh, you, you you take your thumb, thumb in the direction of the current, uh, curl in the direction of the magnetic field. This one's going to be pointing uh, out uh, where the loop is. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next one, Q question one A. Would we expect it to do evaluate that time derivative? Uh, no, no. Um, there, I don't have any. I didn't put any questions that have a, a derivative of a natural log, so you don't, you don't have to worry about that. And I, I think the, 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 this is a, a situation where if if this was a question that I would ask, I would I would give you a hint and I would say that this is. I, I would I, I would explicitly tell you that this is. Um, um, this is a it's a physics class, not a, not a calculus class. So I don't expect you to remember these these things. It's uh, more important to set set it up and evaluate it. Um, okay. Could I explain the resistance again very briefly? Yeah. So um, the way that I found the resistance uh, was to say that in general, um, if the if the resistance is uh, um, well, in general, what you can say is that uh, dr is equal to rho dl over uh, a. And uh, in the case of um, uh, current that's going to flow uh, left to right and not radially outward, this says that uh, r is going to be equal to rho times l. So the total resistance is going to be equal to the resistivity times the total length that the current flows through divided by the cross-sectional area of the loop of wire. And so that's, that's what I have here. So this is just uh, resistivity, this is the total length, and then this is the cross-sectional area. Uh, again, I probably wouldn't ask you, um, I probably wouldn't ask you something like this because it, it, uh, it's something that, I mean, I already know what I'm going to ask. I, I printed the exam on Friday, but um, I'm, there's not something like this on, on the exam because this is really something more from the last exam. But I might ask something like this on the final exam when it's cumulative. Um, well, we need to explain Lenz's law on the exam. Yes. Yeah. So you'll, you'll need to 
uh, be able to explain Lenz's law to uh, justify your answer for Faraday's law. Okay, anything else from this? Uh, yeah, uh, Emily, I'll, I'll do that one after I do the next one. Uh, I think I'm caught up. So um, the next question was uh, question 1A on uh, 2012. Okay, so this is a, a question where you're using Ampere's law, but you, you can't really say that the, that the magnetic field is, is theta hat in the theta hat direction. You have to evaluate it explicitly because it asks you what the magnetic field is at a point. So in order to do that, first I'll, I'll write down what the, what the question is asking. So the question says you have uh, two infinitely long wires that are going to be on the x-axis. So uh, you have one here and one here. Uh, this is at a distance of minus d. This is at a distance d. Um, two infinitely long, extremely thin wires each carry a current i into the page. So uh, these both have the current i going in. And uh, we want to find the x, y, and z components of the total magnetic field at the point with uh, x is equal to 0, z is equal to 0, and y is equal to h. So that's uh, this point right here. So the first thing that we can do is we want to find what the uh, magnetic field as a magnitude is at this point. Um, let's first start with this one right here. So because we're told that these currents are infinitely long in both directions, that tells us that we want to use uh, Ampere's law. So the integral of, over the closed loop, of B dot DL is going to be equal to mu naught times I in. And so uh, in order to evaluate this, we can draw some Amperian loop here for each one of these. And uh, I drew this a little too close to the edge of the board, so I'm not going to be able to get the whole thing. But it's, a, it's going to be a circle that's centered at this point that goes through this point and because this is going in the magnetic field is going to go around the loop like this and so it's going to be tangent to this circle. Let me draw the circle a little bit better. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. But the, the idea here is um, you know the magnetic field is going to go around this circle. And typically I, I call that some theta hat direction. But the reason why you can't leave it just in terms of theta hat is you want to find the total magnetic field here um, that's produced by both of these. And in order to do that, you need to break this into x and y components. But the first thing that I'll do is I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and calculate what the magnetic field is generally. And then we'll evaluate what theta hat is. Okay. So, like I said, this is a problem with uh, Faraday's law, or, sorry, with um, uh, Ampere's law, and so the left-hand side right here is just going to be b 2 pi r is equal to mu naught times i in, where i in is just going to be this lowercase i. Then we can say that b vector is going to be equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r times our theta hat. But, like I said, I can't just leave this in terms of theta hat. I need to say what theta hat is in terms of x and y components. And so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just define some angle here, call this angle theta. And I need to break this vector into components. And so in order to do this, what I'm going to say is that this is 90 degrees. Because this is a right triangle, this angle right here is going to be 90 minus theta. And so that makes this angle right here theta. And so in order to write theta hat in components, what I can do is I can say theta hat is going to be some amount in x hat plus some amount in y hat. Kind of the same way that we were doing things with um, Coulomb's law at the beginning of the semester. And now I just need to figure out what is the x component and what is the y component. So the x component is going to be the component that's opposite of this angle. And it's going to be in the positive x direction. And so this is going to be sine of theta. The y component is going to be the adjacent component, and so uh, that's going to be a cosine of theta. But more specifically, because the, the y component is in the negative direction, uh, this is going to be a minus cosine of theta. Okay. 
So now what we want to do, because you're not told what theta is in the problem, uh, you can't just leave it like this. So what we need to do is we need to write uh, sine and cosine of theta in terms of the sides of the triangle that we have here. So this is the length d. This is the height h. This is a radius r. And so this is going to be r is equal to square root d squared plus h squared. Uh, sine of theta is going to be the opposite, which is h divided by r, and so this is going to be h divided by the square root of d squared plus h squared times x hat, minus uh, the cosine is going to be uh, the adjacent, which is d divided by the hypotenuse r, and so this is going to be d divided by uh, square root d squared plus h squared, okay? So now we have this, then call this one B1. So B1 is going to be equal to, now I have a factor of R and a factor of R here. I'm just going to collect those uh, together. So this is going to be mu naught I divided by 2 pi times D squared plus H squared times H X hat minus D Y hat. So this is the magnetic field from current 1. So we need to find the total magnetic field uh, here. And so that means we have to find the magnetic field also that's produced by this one. And so I'm actually going to draw this over here because this is uh, this is uh, diagrams getting a little bit cluttered. So this is the distance D. Uh, this is uh, uh, the distance R. This is H. Uh, the magnetic field here is going to go around in a circle like this and the direction for theta hat is going to look like this. Okay, So same thing I did last time, I'm going to define this angle here to be theta. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is, this is going to be 90 minus theta. This is a right angle, so this is 90. And so the whole thing is 180, and so in order for that to be true, then this angle right here has to be theta. Okay, so. Uh, well, this is just unfortunate, but we, we saw what this is. I'll, I'll write it again up here. So this is going to be uh, equal to h over r x hat minus uh, d over r y hat. Okay. So now we were able to find uh, this angle theta. So the second magnetic field, actually, it has the same magnitude because it's the same distance uh, away. It's the same current, right? r is, r is still going to be equal to the square root of d squared plus h squared. But the difference is here, when I do b2, b vector 2, and let's call this a theta hat 1, uh, this is going to be mu naught i divided by 2 pi uh, d squared, or let's, let's leave this as an r, uh, theta hat 2. So theta hat 2 is going to be uh, the sine of theta times x hat plus the cosine of theta times y hat. Okay, And so we already figured out what sine and cosine of theta are, so we can uh, just plug this in. And so this says that this is going to be mu naught i divided by 2 pi d squared plus h squared times h uh, x hat plus d times y hat. And so what we see is when we add this together, when I do b vector 1 plus b vector 2, the y components are going to cancel because this one's negative and this one's positive, and then the x components are just going to add. And so what I see in the end is that this is going to be equal to mu naught i h divided by pi d squared plus h squared times x hat. Okay? And then that's, that's the answer. Uh, okay, uh, so, okay, Emily asked for the problem number one from 2016, Brian asked 2009, is the negative cos from the direction, so why we're choosing it to go down, uh, what happens to the r for the theta in B1, never mind, on the minus cos, what happens to the r for the theta in B1, so, um, it's, it's there, um, but what I did was I, I collected them together. So this is really an R squared now, because you see I, you have a factor of R here and a factor of R here. 
And so I, I just did some algebra because I was lazy. I didn't want to write uh, d squared plus h squared to the one half two times. So I just factored it out of this term and I put both of them here. And that's, that's what I did. And I was, I was a little bit quick with the algebra here too. So um, there was a factor of two that I got out uh, when I added the x components together and I canceled the, the two in the denominator. Okay. Uh, so I think that's it for questions on this one. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a little, bit, a little bit of time to look at this while I'm uh, looking up the next question. Okay, so the next one, Emily says number one from 2016. Um, so I'm, I'll, I'll do the second part of this one, but I'm not going to do the first part. Um, because the, the first part is actually, um, is actually exactly the same as, as what I did here. So for, for the question that, uh, that uh, Emily asked, uh, this was uh, problem number one from 2016. Um, basically, it's the same exact thing. Only instead of having uh, really thin wires, these are wires that have some some uh, thickness to them. Uh, but when you find, and they, in that problem they call this point one, when you find the magnetic field at this point, it's actually using exactly the same process as as what I what I just did here. Um, there is a small difference because. Um, the currents are given as I1 and I2, um, and I1 goes in, I2 also goes in. So the, really, the, the only thing that's different about this is they, they wouldn't cancel because the currents aren't exactly the same. Um, but I'll, I'll do the second, the second part of that. Um, Rachel also asks, why can't you use uh, beer savart on this one? You can. You, you can use beer savart on, on, on this question. Um, in fact, any, any question that um, you, you would use Ampere's law, you can use beer savart. It's just more complicated. Um, so with, with beer savart, we, we talk about how we could find, if I have um, some rectangle like this, we can talk about how we can find what the magnetic field is produced by each side of this. Um, and, and that's, that's just really saying that if this has some length of A, then I'm going to integrate this from uh, minus A over 2 to A over 2 when you, when you set up uh, uh, the Beer Savart law for this. Well, for infinitely long cases, you would change your limits of integration to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, and you could do that calculation like that. But like I said, it's, it's simpler to do this with Ampere's law. And so if you, if you have the right type of symmetry, you want to use Ampere's law if you can. Okay, but back, back to this question. So uh, the second part of this question says, uh, instead of trying to find what the magnetic field is at the point uh, that's along the y-axis, it's, it asks you to find what the magnetic field is uh, at a point on the x-axis that's actually inside of one of these wires. So this is the way the setup looks for this. So this is uh, some uh, distance, I, I think this was S, yeah. So these are some distance S. The center of, of these is a distance S away from the origin. Uh, this has uh, some uh, radius of D. This one also has a radius of D. And what we want to do is we want to find what the magnetic field is at this point. Uh, that's a distance D over 2 from the center of uh, this wire. Okay. So in order to do this, uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, calculate what the magnetic field is from each of these wires and then just add them together at this point. So we know that this has some current I1 that points in. And this has some current I2 that points uh, in, I believe. Uh, let me see, let me see. Left has a current I1 flowing, flowing out. This one's pointing out, sorry. This one's pointing out. OK. So in order to, to do this, we're just going to apply Ampere's law. So the integral of b dot dl is equal to mu naught times i in. Uh, I can draw 
a loop here for, for this circle. And so that's just going to say that the left-hand side is going to be b two pi r uh, is going to be equal to mu naught times i one. And so b vector is going to be equal to mu naught i one divided by two pi r. Um, but now r here is going to be a distance uh, s, 2s plus d over 2, right? Because that's, that's this distance here. So this is a distance 2s plus d over 2. So this is evaluated uh, at r is equal to 2s plus d over 2. And because this current is going in, this is going to have a magnetic field that goes around the circle like this. And at this point, this just points vertically down in the y direction. So this is a minus y hat. So this says that, um, minus y hat, so this says that b1 is going to be equal to mu naught i1 divided by 2 pi times 2s plus d divided by 2 times minus y hat. Okay? Um, now, to find what the magnetic field is from the second one, we have to be careful because the Amperian loop that we have in this case, hold on, hold on, I do something funny. Uh, this one's pointing up, sorry, sorry, this point's up because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mixing up my, my into and out of the page. So this is, this is pointing out of the page and so the magnetic field is gonna curl in this direction so it's, it's going that way, sorry about that. Yeah, so this is going to be a plus y hat, plus y hat. Okay. Now this one does point into the page, and so this, this loop goes around like this. And this one's going to have some component that points in the minus y direction. But we'll, the first thing that we need to do is here, we need, we need to figure out uh, how much of the current is actually going through this, this circle. Okay. So we remember that um, from the right-hand side of uh, Ampere's law, I in is going to be equal to the integral of j dot dA. Right, and this is going to be uh, this J is going to be the total current I total divided by the total uh, cross-sectional area here. So this is A total, and so in this case, this says that this is going to be I two divided by pi times d divided by two quantity squared. Okay. And then uh, in order to find I in, what we want to say is I in is going to be equal to the integral from uh, zero to D divided by two, right? Because this Amperian loop goes up to the distance D over two, uh, times uh, of uh, I two divided by pi D divided by two squared times two pi R D R. Uh, what did I do? This is a D. Man, I'm, I'm off my game today. Um, this is a D, because the, the, total, the total area is, is this, uh, this uh, radius D. So this is a, a D. The limits go from 0 to D divided by 2. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to get, uh, this is going to be I2 divided by pi uh, D squared times pi D divided by 2 squared. Uh, and then we can put that together with uh, Ampere's law to find what the, what the magnetic field is from this, this portion. So B is going to be equal to um, uh, mu naught times uh, I2 divided by 2 pi times D divided by 2 uh, times uh, the pi's are going to cancel. This is going to be a D uh, divided by 2 squared divided by d squared. Uh, one factor of d over 2 is going to cancel. That gives me a factor of 4 in the denominator. And then um, I'm going to cancel one of my d's as well. And so this is going to be mu naught i2 divided by 4 pi times d. And this one is going to be pointing in the minus y hat direction. So this is b2. Okay. So to find the total magnetic field, b total, this is going to be equal to B1 plus B2. Okay.
Ah, so uh, Rachel, go back to the to the last question. The reason why um, the reason why x was sine of theta and not cosine of theta is because for this circle, what's the direction of the magnetic field that's going to point tangent to the circle? And if this is the angle theta, and then this is um, 90 minus theta, then this is 90 degrees, and so this is theta. And so the x component right here is going to be opposite of the angle, so that makes this a sine of theta. And the y component is going to be adjacent, but it's also um, in a negative direction, so this is minus cosine of theta, y hat. Okay. So that's theta hat is equal to that. So that's, that's why um, the, uh, the x component was a sine, the y component was a, was a cosine for the last problem. Um, Okay, so that was number one from 2016. The next question is um, 2009, question two, part B. It's 2009. Oop, that's a syllabus. Two thousand nine question two part B. Ah, ah, okay, okay. This is this is an interesting one. Uh oh, is this wet? Will this get wet? Oh, that's great. I'm just making a bunch of streaks on the board now. I'll just have to deal with that, I guess. Okay, so... So this one, uh, so like I said, this is 2009, uh, question 2, part B. So I'll, I'll just do the, the whole thing because it, it'll be helpful to, to do that. Um, so we have this wire uh, that has some, some thickness to it. Uh, and this has some current I that goes into the page. So I points in. And then we have some uh, current here that also points into the page. So this is I. Just going to point in here. Um, and what we want to do is we want to find the magnetic field uh, made by the first wire everywhere. So that's part A. So in order to do this, we write down uh, Ampere's law integral B dot DL is going to be equal to mu naught uh, times I in. Uh, the uh, current is going to point in. And so my loop is going to go around like this. Uh, this is going to be B times 2 pi R is going to be equal to mu naught times I in. So there are two regions here. R is going to be less than, um, what is the radius? has a radius of H because of reasons. So this is a radius of H. So R is less than H and R is greater than H. So for R is greater than H, the... Um, for R is greater than H, the current that's going to be inside this loop is uh, just going to be the, the total current. So this is just going to be uh, I, or so a lowercase i. In this one, we have to say that I in is going to be equal to the integral of J dot dA, where J is going to be equal to I divided by pi H squared. And so this is going to be the integral of I divided by pi h squared uh, times 2 pi r dr uh, integrated from 0 to r, right? Because this is, this is a radius of r. It's not the whole current. It's just the current that goes up to r. And so this says that this is going to be equal to i times r squared divided by h squared. And so what we can do is we can solve for the magnetic field in this region. And when we do that, we see that it's going to be 
Uh, B uh, is going to be equal to, uh, this is going to be mu naught i divided by, mu naught i times r divided by 2 pi h squared. And we'll say that's in a theta hat direction. Um, in the region where r is greater than h, we get a familiar result. This is uh, b is going to be equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r, again, in, the, in this theta hat direction. Okay. Now, the second part of the question asks, find uh, all of the points where the magnetic field will be zero. And so there's, there's one fairly intuitive choice and then one that's not quite so intuitive. The intuitive choice is somewhere directly in between these wires, right? Because if these have the same current, this one has a magnetic field that goes around like this. This one has a magnetic field that goes around like this. This one has a component that points down. This one has a component that points up. They have the same current, and so the distance that is in between them where the magnetic fields are going to cancel is uh, going to be uh, a distance of uh, W uh, divided by uh, 2. Okay, So that's, that's the first point. Uh, sorry, I missed, did I miss somebody's question? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back uh, after this one. Uh, so that's the first point. Uh, the second point's not, not so obvious uh, because what's going to happen is this, um, this current, uh, this produces a magnetic field that goes around like this. This one produces a magnetic field that goes around like this. But there's also a point on the inside where the, um, where the, uh, the magnetic fields will cancel. And the way that you can see that is, is to think about it like this. So for points that are between this radius and this radius, um, this, this uh, current is going to win for, for which one produces the, the magnetic field that's going to cancel the other one, or that, that's going to be larger than the other one, right? So if I'm right here, this loop on the left, the current on the left is going to produce a larger magnetic field than the one that's over here, right? And then if I move out here, then there's, there's a point where they're going to cancel. But then we can think about what's going to happen in the middle. So what's going to happen exactly at the center of this one? There is no magnetic field that's produced by uh, the, the, the current that, that goes through the, the circular wire here uh, at this point, right? Because it's, it's linear, and so if I pl plug in r is equal to zero here, there's no magnetic field that's produced by that wire. And so this one would actually win here. And so somewhere between these two points, there's a point where it's balanced in such a way that uh, they're going to, going to cancel each other. And so in order to see how that's going to work, what we can say is that b vector one plus b vector two is going to be equal to zero. And we need to define how we're measuring this distance to be relative to the same point. So if I say that this is going to be B, uh, uh, B1 is going to be equal to mu naught I R divided by 2 pi H squared. Uh, in order for this to cancel, then this distance R is going to be uh, part of the answer that I'm going to get from this one. And so if this is a, a distance of W, then this distance is going to be uh, R, sorry, this is W minus R. And so the magnetic field from 2 is going to be mu naught I R divided by 2 pi, sorry, mu naught I divided by 2 pi W uh, minus R. And then these are going to be equal to each other. And so this says mu naught i r divided by 2 pi h squared is going to be equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi w minus r. Um, what I see here is that uh, my mu naughts and my i's and my pi's and my 2's are going to cancel. Uh, and then what I see is that um, r times uh, w minus r is equal to uh, one. Solve, solve this equation um, for r. And then that, that's, uh, that's what you'll have. Okay. 
so I, I skipped somebody's question. You do question four from 2017. Question four from 2017. Okay, okay. This is a uh, Faraday's law question. Good, because we haven't we haven't done uh, any. No, we, the first one was a, a Faraday's law question. Um, okay. All right. Uh, so. This one has some loop of wire that is oriented like this. Now, it's, it's not drawn great, but uh, this is really what it means. So um, this is in the uh, X, Y plane. And uh, if this is the Z direction, this is the direction of the magnetic field. So uh, B vector is going to be equal to B0 times uh, Z hat. Is really what it's what it's saying here. Um, so it says that the loop is going to expand so that the area is given by a as a function of time is going to be equal to a zero uh, times one minus one minus or one plus one plus gamma t. And what we want to do is we want to find what the charge on the capacitor is as a function of time. Okay, so what we can do to start out with here is to write down Faraday's law. So the integral uh, around the closed loop of E dot dl is going to be equal to minus partial derivative with respect to time, integral B dot dA. And so the first thing that I always like to do is to choose a direction for dA so that it, the dot product is going to be positive. And so this says then that uh, the right-hand side is going to become uh, minus partial derivative with respect to time times the integral of B times dA, because the cosine of the angle between these is 1. Uh, now what we can do is we can see that um, the magnetic field is just going to be a constant. So I can pull that outside of the integral. So this is going to be equal to minus partial derivative with respect to time d0 integral dA, and we know, because uh, we've seen lots of integrals like this, if I have the integral of d something, I just get what that something is, and so this is just going to be minus partial derivative with respect to time, uh, b0 times a is a function of time, which is a0, 1 minus 1 plus gamma t, okay? Now, when I take this time derivative uh, with a negative sign, this is going to give me a minus b0, a0 uh, times gamma. And that's the right-hand side. Now I just need to evaluate the left-hand side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is going to be some plus q, this is some minus q. Because dA points up, uh, dL goes around the circle like this. So that's the direction of my loop. So when I go around this loop, I'm going to see a positive charge uh, first. And so this is going to say that uh, the left-hand side is going to be a plus Q divided by C. And so this ultimately says that Q is going to be equal to minus uh, B0. And let's, just because I don't know why I would like this, but it, it looks nice. Uh, A0, B0 times C, because it's ABC times gamma. Um, and then this is, this is what the, the answer is. And so because I have a negative sign here, that just means that the, uh, the charge is opposite of the way that I, I drew it here. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for this question. Uh, does it say that the loop has, oh, the loop has a resistance, the loop has a resistance. So there's some resistance here. So uh, yeah, this, this gets more complicated than something that I would ask on this exam. Um, but if there's also a resistance here, what, what you would say is there's some current that goes around this way, and then I also get a plus I times R here. And this is where we would stop. Because this is, this is actually a differential equation you need to solve because um, I is equal to dQ dt. And so this says that uh, R dQ dt 
plus Q divided by C is equal to minus B0 A0 times gamma. Uh, and then this is, you, you could, there's, uh, there's multiple ways that you can solve this, but uh, this is actually what we're going to be doing this week after the, uh, the exam. Oops. Man, the last, the last one, it didn't freeze at all. And this, this one we froze twice already. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is this is actually a, a, it's a differential equation that you need to you need to solve here. Um, uh, this is uh, gamma, uh, and yeah, the C is still over here. Um, okay, uh, did I miss anybody else? So let me let me scroll back up here. Uh, so Brian, I did Brian's question, that was 2009, skipped red, did red now, uh, Pablo wants 2017 number two, 2017 number two, okay, well it's convenient because I have this exam open already, oh, I don't want to do this one, um, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'm not going to do it, um, this one's, it's, it's really hard to explain, uh, and it's, it's a difficult problem, not because the physics is difficult, but because the geometry is difficult. So, this question asks, um, you have some charge that's a distance of D along the uh, z-axis, so this is the z-axis. Um, <laughs> basicus. Uh, never mind that this is not a right-handed coordinate system, but this is this is the x, this is the x y direction, um, and then you have this this loop that's um, in the plane here. Now, why why this ends up being uh, difficult is because when you take this cross product between d l, because ultimately what you're doing is you're doing b s of r, d b is equal to mu naught. I divided by 4 pi dl cross r hat divided by r squared. Ultimately, when you take this cross product between dl, which goes around the loop, and r hat, which points like this, you find a vector that points um, uh, dl cross r hat. It's going to point uh, like this. But for every point along here, you're going to have a different one of those vectors. And so this gets even more difficult to draw because this one's kind of like out at an angle like this. For the one that's below here, uh, this one is uh, the opposite direction. So this is uh, DL cross R hat points down like this. Um, and ultimately what you're going to see is they're going to cancel so that the only component you're going to have is in the Z direction. Uh, but the geometry is difficult for this, and I wouldn't ask something like this. So what I would say is, is do this if, if d is equal to zero. And that actually simplifies this quite a bit because then that, that's going to say then that um, uh, now I'm just working in the xy plane. So I'm, I'm in the xy plane, I have this particle moving up uh, with some velocity v, the current goes around. Um, in some direction, I don't, I don't know which way it said it was. Um, oh, oh, it actually, it doesn't tell you what the current is, it tells you what the force is. So the force on this uh, is going to point into the page, which says that, uh, why would you use a left-handed coordinate system? Um, so this is the x direction, this is the, sorry, this is the y direction, this is the x direction. Um, and then uh, the force is going to point this way. And so what we want to do is we want to find what the uh, current is. Um, so the first thing that we can do is if we know that this has some velocity that's going to go in the positive y direction, we can find the direction of the magnetic field by kind of reverse engineering the Lorentz force law. So F is going to be equal to QV cross B. And we know if we want to find the direction of the force, we take our right hand, put it in the direction of V, 
and then curl in the direction of the magnetic field and our thumb points in the direction of uh, the force. But here we, we don't have what the magnetic field is, we need to find what it is. But what we can do is we can say that our thumb has to be the direction of the force. So if we fix our thumb in the direction of the force and point our fingers in the direction of the velocity, our fingers are going to have to curl into the direction that B points. So in this case, this says that B is going to point, and we'll just say that it's uh, some, some B that's going to, going to point out, right? Because the thumb in the direction of the force, fingers curl in the direction of uh, B if my uh, fingers are originally pointing in the direction of V. So that's the direction of our magnetic field. So now that we know that this is the direction of our magnetic field, again, we can kind of reverse engineer this to, to find what the direction of the current is. So if we take our thumb and point in the direction of the magnetic field, our fingers are going to curl in the direction of the current that's going to produce that magnetic field. And so what that says is the current goes around like this. Okay. So now that we know the direction of the current, uh, we, we can uh, go ahead and uh, assume this current to calculate what the magnetic field is. And then uh, we, we can say that from this equation, uh, F is going to be equal to QVB. And then we can plug that magnetic field in here and then solve for the current. That's, that's kind of the approach that we're going to go through here. So if this is going to be DL, this is going to be R hat. Uh, DL, because this is uh, uh, B of art and this is uh, around the arc of a circle, this is going to be uh, R D theta in the theta hat direction. Uh, what was the ra Yeah, radius is just capital R. Uh, and then when we do dl cross r hat, this is going to say that this is going to be the magnitude of dl times the magnitude of r hat times the sine of the angle between them. Let's call that a, a phi times n hat. We actually already know what the direction it should point because we, we found that already. Um, but that just says that this cross product is going to give me an r d theta times sine of phi. And because this angle is 90 degrees, that's just going to be 1. Um, so we're almost there. We just need to, uh, to plug this into uh, B of Savart law and then evaluate. And so this says that B vector is going to be equal to mu naught I divided by 4 pi times the integral of R d theta divided by R squared times, uh, and the limits of integration are going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, this is going to cancel a factor of R. I just get a factor of 2 pi out here, and so this says that b is going to be equal to, and this is uh, pointing out, uh, b is going to be equal to mu naught i divided by 2r. I can take that and plug it in here. That says that f is going to be equal to qv mu naught i divided by 2r, and then solve for i. And so in the end, this says that i is going to be equal to um, f times 2 times r divided by q v times mu naught. Okay? And that's, that's it. Uh, okay. So that was uh, 2017 number 2. Um, okay. So then the next one is... Um, it's an interesting name, Canadian tacos. Um, I wonder if they have Mexican maple syrup. Probably. Uh, go over exam 2014 question four. Okay. 2014 question four. Uh, um. Uh, this is this is not one that um, uh, you'd have to worry about because this is this is uh, ultimately this is an RC circuit uh, and this is this is a, it's a time dependent um, uh, uh, circuit. Uh, so yeah, if you if you're looking at old exams and you see something that that looks kind of like um, uh, I don't know like uh, like this, so one plus or minus e to the minus t divided by RC. If you see anything with a term that looks like this. Or like this, 
If you see either one of these two terms in one of the answers, that's not a question that I would ask. That's a, it's a time-dependent circuit, and we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Uh, during the exam, will it be relatively easy to know or figure out which law to use for the questions? Yeah, so um, something that you might have noticed with, with some of the previous exams is that they'll combine multiple laws in one question. Every one of the questions that I have is exclusively one law. So there's a question for B.A. Savart, there's a question for Lorentz Force Law, there's a question for Faraday's Law, um, and there's a question for Ampere's Law. And they're all independent of each other. Uh, so it, it should be pretty easy to tell uh, what you're, which law you're supposed to use. Okay. Any other questions? I'll, I'll post this, uh, this video uh, right after this. Although it, it takes a while to upload, so it might be like an hour or so. Number three from 2016, okay. This will, this will be the last one. So number three from 2016. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Uh, rod has no resistance. Okay, because if if this had resistance, then it would be uh, it would be a time dependent circuit. So, okay, yeah, this this one's interesting. I like this one. So. What you have here what you have here is um, this situation. So you have this capacitor, and I guess I don't like that piece of chalk. This capacitor, and then you have um, some rod that's on this rail, and this is going to be moving to the right with some velocity. Uh, as a function of x, which is given by uh, v of x of t is going to be equal to uh, alpha times t. So this is going to move out like this. And then you have some current down here that goes to the right that's just constant, uh, i0 here. And what you want to do is you want to find what the uh, magnitude, or you, you want to find what the, what the current is that goes, or you want to find what the charge on the capacitors is, is as a function of time. Um, okay, so uh, this is a, a Faraday's law question that you have to use Ampere's law first to find what the, uh, the current is that's, or, sorry, what the magnetic field is that's produced by this current. And so that says the integral of B dot dl is equal to mu naught times i in. We've done uh, uh, 100 of these, but uh, this goes around like that. Uh, this says that uh, b vector is going to be equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r, and that's going to point uh, out uh, in this region. So because that points out, the next thing we want to do is apply Faraday's law integral e dot dl is going to be equal to um, negative partial derivative with respect to time, integral b dot d a. Um, so we'll choose d a to point um, out as well because the, uh, the magnetic field points out. So d a points out. That says my loop is going to go around in this direction. I'm also going to say that this is just going to be a plus q. This is a minus q. Okay. So what that says is minus partial derivative with respect to time of the integral of b dot dA is going to be equal to uh, minus partial derivative with respect to time of uh, the integral of b times dA. Um, now, the magnetic field is not constant here with respect to the variables that you're integrating with respect to here. So because this is some dr and this is some dx, I'm going to have to integrate over this. Uh, and I also know that this is a distance of d, this is a distance of w, and I'm just going to say that this is going to be some, some x of t here. 
Okay. So in order to do this, uh, what I can say then is that uh, um, this is going to uh, uh, get evaluated with this uh, b that I have here. So this is going to be equal to negative partial derivative with respect to time, integral mu naught i over 2 pi r dr dx, because I have a dx and a dr here. And my limits of integration are going to go from uh, d to d plus w in r, and from 0 to x of t in uh, x. So when I do that, this is going to give me uh, a mu naught i naught divided by 2 pi uh, times a natural log of d plus w divided by d times uh, x of t, and then the negative partial derivative with respect to time of this. But what I, what I see here is when I take the partial derivative with respect to time, this only acts on x, which makes this x a dx dt with a negative sign. But I know dx dt is just v. And so this says this is going to be minus mu naught i naught divided by 2 pi natural log d plus w divided by d times v of t, which is going to be alpha t. So we have, we have our right-hand side. Now, to evaluate the left-hand side, we just do exactly what we've always done with our um, time-independent circuits, and that's just to say, I go around this loop, I see a positive charge here. Uh, when I do the integral of e dot dl over the closed loop, that's just going to give me a plus q divided by c, and then take this and set it equal to this and solve for c. And then that's it. Is that the correct direction for b? Um, Oh, it, it looks like it's not. Um, uh, what, I, what I said was that, I, I, and I need to be consistent with the convention that I use, um, because it's, it's hard to tell, does this go over the top or does this one go over the top? I was, I was saying that this one was going behind. So this is really, this is like that. And it, it's hard to see. So this is, this is going around like this, and then it's coming out. This is, this is out, it's just drawn poorly. Um, and, you know, what, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I can't draw these uh, very well sometimes. It's hard to draw these things in three dimensions. Um, okay, and then that's, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, Would all questions that involve v be integrated over two different variables? Uh, that's a difficult question for, for me to answer. Um, I would say no. Um, would all questions that involve v be integrated over two different variables? No, no. Um, this one, I mean, this one happened, I mean, and this, this was kind of a unique question in and of itself because, uh, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the velocity was given and not, well, the velocity was given and it was a function of time. Um, but then I, I guess what, what you're asking is why, why do I have a, a dr dx here? And, th and that's because uh, dA is for Cartesian coordinates and it's just this little box that has a, a length of dr and a height of, or a, a length of dx and a height of dr. Um, but you you could have said this a little bit differently if you're more more comfortable with it this way. Instead of doing a, a little box, you can do strips. So you have you have strips like this, where no, you, you can't you can't do the strips like that. You have to do the strips like this. You can do strips like this, where this is dr, and this is x of t. So you can say that dA is equal to x of t times dr, and then, and then you're only integrating once. Um, oh, I froze. Okay. Yeah, so, so what, what you could do instead of doing these tiny little boxes, you can do uh, these, these strips. 
and then and then you would say that instead of uh, dA is equal to dx dr, then it's uh, dA is equal to x of t times dr. Um, that ends up not being true in general. So if the if the magnetic field varied over both x and r, then you couldn't do this. Um, which is why I, I personally prefer to just always write dA in terms of the infinitesimals. Um, but I, I don't even do that when I do it in, in polar coordinates. So um, I guess I'm not even really really consistent uh, with myself all the time anyway. Um, but like, like I said, if, you, if you're more comfortable not doing a double integral, then you can just parameterize this in terms of strips and then uh, add up the strips. Okay, um, so that's going to be it. Um, I'll post, um, I'll post uh, this video uh, once it's done rendering, and then I'll be, um, I'll have my phone on, and uh, I'll, I'll be able to look at Slack if you guys ask uh, questions on there. I probably won't stay up really late, but you know, maybe within the next hour or so, if somebody asks a question, I'll be able to answer it. Okay, so uh, good luck studying, and then I'll uh, see everybody tomorrow.